Hey everyone, this is Adam, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use your Figma variables as a text component library in Figma using the CopyDoc plugin. So to get started, all we need to do is go to our Figma file, click on the little resources icon up here, and if you search for CopyDoc, so that's C-O-P-Y-D-O-C, and under the plugins tab, if you just click on the CopyDoc result, you can either run the plugin by clicking this run button here, or you can click on this save icon for easy access later. So I've already clicked the save icon, so I'm gonna to go to my canvas, just right click anywhere and go down to plugins, and then click on the CopyDoc item, and that's just gonna run the plugin that we saved a second ago. So if you're new to the plugin, the way that it works is it provides you with a set of tools to uh, update Figma copy and export copy and make all different changes to text uh, in a variety of ways. Today I'm just going to be focusing on the content library feature. If you want to know how the other ones work, uh, check out the CopyDoc playlist on the YouTube channel. But for today I'm just going to be going through how to use Figma variables as a content library. So to get started, all we need to do is go to the content library button and click on that. And if you go over to the integrations tab, so click on integrations, and then down here, you basically wanna select the Figma option. So by default, it'll select the Google Sheets integration, but for today, we're gonna to be focusing on the Figma variables integration. So just make sure you've got Figma string variables selected, and then we're ready to go. Okay, so the way this uh, feature works is it basically allows you to take your Figma variables. So if you go over to your Figma right-hand side column and click on the local variables option, so this local variables option over here, click on that. And this will allow you to create some variables in your Figma file that are gonna be accessible uh, inside of the plugin in a moment. So the way that it works is you basically click on the create variable button over here and you wanna click on the string option. So click on the string option with the little text icon. And then what we can do is start creating some text variables that we'll be able to use in our content library. So for example, I'm just gonna call one uh, headings. So I'm gonna create one called headings and I've already got some copy that I wanna use and I'm just gonna copy paste that into the value field. So I'm just gonna paste that into value. And you can see now if we go back to our plugin and click on the little refresh icon in the bottom right here, you can see that it immediately loads up our Figma variable as a text component library option. So basically if we expand that, we can see that we've got all these different text options and we can now apply those to our Figma layers with one click. So for example, if I click on this text layer here, I can basically click on this apply button and that will automatically apply a random uh, bit of text from our little variable here into the text layer in Figma. Uh, we can also select individual uh, strings, so you can select which one you want to use there, and that will also also apply it. Uh, you might also notice that there's multiple strings in this options area here, yet we only pasted one value into here. And the reason for that is the plugin automatically uh, determines if there's multiple strings by uh, detecting the double pipe symbol. So you can see here I've got the pipe symbol, so you can add that on your keyboard. If you just do uh, shift forward slash, that'll add the pipe symbol. So you can see here, I could basically add more uh, pipe symbols, double pipe symbols to split up these strings. And those will automatically get imported as different strings in here. We can also add individual ones. So if you just wanted to create a string called, uh, you know, CTA for a CTA button, and we want that to be learn more, uh, you, could, you could add that as a single string. And then if we refresh the copy here, that's just gonna add it as a single string. So if you were to apply that, that would only ever apply that one string and you just have that as a single item, which is totally fine. You probably want that in a lot of cases, uh, but I just wanted to show you how to add multiple uh, strings. So in this example, uh, we could do uh, multiple uh, CTAs. So we could do try it now and add that with the double pipe symbol and refresh that. And in here, we'll now get two of them. So we've got our learn more CTA and our try it now CTA. So this is a really easy way of splitting up the string into multiple variants in case you wanna have multiple options for different bits of copy. Uh, we can also do that for our projects. So I've got a bunch of different projects uh, in this string here. So I'm just gonna add a new variable called projects. So if I add projects as the name and paste in the value uh, with those pipe symbols again, just to split up some of those project names. I can get rid of these text layers now. And if we refresh the variables again, you can see we've now got a little projects item in here. And the cool thing is we can also apply this to multiple layers at once. So for example, if I were to select uh, all of these 
uh, titles. So I'm just going to open up these groups. And if I go ahead and select the project name for all of these tiles, so I'm just going to select all of those six layers. Then what I can do is I can open up this little panel here and I can apply those in order. So I could do an ordered version, which is going to go Nike, Adidas, Apple uh, in order, the way that we added it in the Figma variables value. Or we can do random, so we can randomly roll out those copy uh, updates to the selected layers. We can do it alphabetically, so that's just going to go from A to Z based on the variables that we added. Or we can do Z to A, so we can do reverse alphabetical as well. Uh, and of course we can just click on the supply button and that will just automatically do a random application. Uh, or we can apply the same value to multiple uh, selections. So if you wanted to apply the same string to multiple text layers, you can definitely do that as well. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to do an ordered version uh, based on my original Figma variable order. So yeah, that's basically it. I just wanted to run through that really quickly uh, in case you've been playing around with the new Figma variables feature and wanted to know how to use this uh, more seamlessly with your text layers. Uh, it's worth mentioning that this is not going to apply the variables to the text layers themselves. Uh, so you notice here, if we go to this text layer, you've got the option in Figma to apply a variable to that text layer. So you can basically apply one of these variables to the text layer. And if that gets updated in here, so if we were to add, uh, you know, a buy now CTA onto that text, that would automatically update that variable in here. So that's not what this feature is doing. This feature is basically just making it easier to consume uh, these variables as a on-demand text library. It's not going to sync up your variables over time. So that's just something to be mindful of if you are going to be using this feature, uh, that it's really just an on-demand uh, apply once and you know use it as is sort of thing. Uh, but it's going to give you a really easy way to keep these bits of text in your official uh, Figma variables panel and then just sync those up in here uh, when you actually need them. So yeah, we'll leave it there for today. Hopefully that's helpful. Uh, if you've been wanting to use uh, the Figma text variables in a different way to use it as a bit more of a text library, uh, searchable text library. So you can do that here as well. You can search the copy, uh, make it a bit easier. But yeah, hopefully that's gonna be handy for you if you're using the variables feature uh, with your team. Feel free to give this new integration option a try in CopyDoc. So thank you as always for watching and we'll be back with more Figma tutorials like this one very soon.